everybody. Welcome to the Hallmark Use Podcast. We're so excited today to be talking to one of our favorite Hallmark Hall stars that we like to do every Monday here on the Hallmark Use Podcast. And I'm so excited today to be talking to Fiona Vroom. This is so much fun. I'm Rachel and Fiona, thanks so much for coming on the podcast. It's my absolute pleasure to be here. Hi, everybody. Yeah. So what we like to do for the podcast is we like to ask our guests to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what inspired you to become an actress. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so I've been acting probably, you know, since I was about 11 years old. And the first time I ever stepped foot onto onto the stage, I actually got quite addicted to that feeling, that rush of adrenaline that goes through your body when you're excited about something. And um, I started off as a dancer. So I danced uh, I, I trained in ballet for, mm. for 20 years, actually, um, and just got so, um, I fell in love with that feeling of, of having an audience and, and that feeling of entertaining. And, um, and then I had my first acting gig when I was 11, and I played Mrs. Claus in the student production of, like, the Christmas musical. <laughs> and I made the audience laugh, and um, feeling their laughter was actually what, what I fell in love with. And so I just wanted to um, continue to do that, to make people happy, to make people feel, um, to feel good. And, and that's, I think was, was the biggest part about me becoming an actor. So did you at reach a point where you kind of had to choose whether you wanted to pursue ballet more or acting more, or did just kind of work out that way? Yeah, actually, that was, um, that was a big decision. Actually, it, it did come down to that. So I got quite competitive with ballet training all through high school. And when I was about 13, uh, I started singing and training and doing a lot of musical theater. And um, I was always part of, of community theater projects in, in my hometown, Vancouver, BC, which is Hollywood North. <laughs> and um, there, there came a point where I, as a, as a dancer, I really had to focus, you know, I was dancing about seven hours a day mm -hmm. and it was, it was competing with, um, with all of the rehearsals that I wanted to go to, to be part of these musical theater shows. And what ended up happening was I, I ended up actually the ballet kind of fell to the sidelines. Um, and I ended up going more the musical theater route. I, I studied at the Canadian college of performing arts, but I got in with a dance, um, background actually that's how I got into the school so mm -hmm. ballet even though I stopped making it a focus of mine it was still uh, a big part of my training um, with acting and it still is a big part of, of acting I think people with a dance background you know um, it's choreography right when you're on when you're on mm -hmm. set and you're on your mark or you're playing with whatever it is they throw at you, walk, walk down the street, walk and talk, grab this prop, you know, it's all choreography, right? You have to do it over and over again and you have to replicate what you did. So ballet training has definitely helped hmm. in that a lot. That's interesting. I wouldn't have thought of that. Huh. Yeah. And certainly yeah. the discipline that you need for, for ballet, I'm sure uh, comes into handy as well. Yes. Uh, the discipline, it really does teach you to work hard and the hours that we go through on set, it's, it's hard work to get through those days sometimes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's uh, the discipline training was good. So what were some <laughs> of the, what were some of the musical theater that you did early on? Oh, I've done so many shows. I love musical theater. I've, I've been in um, Annie, Grease. Mm -hmm. uh, what were some other words? Um, West Side Story was a favorite. Um, the Music Man was a favorite of I mine. That yeah. One. Chorus Line. Sound of Music, um, yeah, Guys and Dolls, like, I've done them all. I, I love musical theater. That's, it's definitely a, a passion of mine for sure. That's amazing. Well, if we ever get our dream fantasy Hallmark musical, we'll have to make sure. Oh, oh my God, it has to happen. That yeah. would be amazing. Right? Yes, the Hallmark I mean, musical. <laughs> I mean, it just makes sense. Like, music is such a big part of Christmas. Totally. I mean, come on. I can't believe it hasn't happened already. I, I should write know. it. Produce it. There we go. There's an idea. You should, uh, because there are so many people that are like great singers that could be, I mean, mm -hmm. you could have uh, Alicia Witt could be in it. You could have Nikki DeLoach is a great singer. I mean, the list goes on. It would be amazing. 
Yeah, it really would be. That would be an awesome all-star cast, hey? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and people love these, uh, you know, live musicals that they do on on uh, NBC or Fox or whatever. I mean, it would, totally. It would be so fun. So we're we're hopeful. <laughs> we, I mean, I, I, we wish that we had some sway in all of this, but we like to have our little fantasy movies that we dream up. But it would be, I think, it would do so well for them, and it would be so much fun. So hopefully. Hey, you never know. Anything could happen in the Hallmark world. And I think a musical would be totally up the alley. Totally. Yeah, it would. And so do you miss the doing live theater uh, since you do so much television and, and uh, film? You know, it is always like it just holds such a, a special place in my heart, the stage, um, just because it was such a huge part of, of my life for so long. Mm -hmm. I would love to do a play again I would love to go and be on Broadway that that is definitely a goal and something I um you know I think is constantly in the back of my mind mm -hmm. um yeah there's no there's no other feeling like going like stepping out on stage um but my love for the the camera is is totally different mm -hmm. um but it's also a big passion it's just it's just a different process yeah that's interesting. Yeah, I did um, plays in high school. I mean, I was just in the chorus and stuff, but it was really fun. I was in uh, Bye Bye Birdie. <laughs> and then, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that one's a really fun one. Because I think that high school plays and musicals should be musicals that have lots of parts so people can, big chorus scenes, so as many people can participate as possible. Because uh, you got to get that. Definitely. You got to get people to realize that you know get excited about it and if they can ever participate then they're never going to get excited they're never going to find out if they could be good at something and uh so yeah we did the uh, we did the whiz which was really fun uh and uh and fiber birdie and some plays and uh oklahoma a great one the whiz yeah. is so fun oh oklahoma is yeah. a great one i love that one yeah so that's really cool well so I think by IMDb that your first role was was on site. Is that correct? Uh, I do believe that was my first on camera role. Yeah, you are yeah. right. Good job. Hundred <laughs> points for you. <laughs> so, so yeah. What was that like? I guess auditioning, getting your first role, uh, all of that, going back to two thousand and eight. It's been pretty exciting. Wow. Um, you know. It was just such a different world coming from the theater background. And I mean, of course, I trained and worked hard at learning uh, the camera before I started working in front of the camera. Um, it's just that it's a different beast and it's a different world. So when you step on set, um, of course, I was prepared with all my lines memorized and, you know, ready to go out of the gate. And and on set, it's it's different. You have one rehearsal for camera usually, and then... Um, and then the lights and, and, and the lighting guys come in and they set everything up and then the actors are called back to set and you go, you the camera, they call action and you do it and, and then you do it again and then you do it again and again and from a different angle, from a different angle, from a different angle, right? So it's, it's just a, a different process and um, the world, you know, everyone works together. That's what I really love about acting. Um, on a show there's so many people that are bringing it all together to make it happen so that the audience can finally watch the finished product mm -hmm. like everyone has a job from the props guy they come and they give you you know your your wedding ring and, and your watch and your purse and they ask you you know do you need any other props for this scene and then there's the lighting guys and they're you know they're doing their best to make you look glamorous all the time and, and then there's the camera operators and the director and the producers. Like, it's such a big working machine of collaboration that, to me, that is super exciting. Mm -hmm. Was it super intimidating, though, when you first started? Scary? Completely, well. completely intimidating. <laughs> yeah, I remember yeah. The, the first director I worked with, um, his name's Mel Damsky. And I actually worked with him again on a Hallmark movie with Lacey Chabert. Uh, he directed me in, uh, like, 10 years later, I guess it was. Um, he directed me and Lacey in one called, uh, what did we do together? Moonlight in Vermont. in Vermont. Yeah, yeah Moonlight in Vermont. 
So I worked with Mel again, 10 years later, and he remembered me from, from way back when. And I said to him, I was like, you scared me so much because that was my first job. And I remember he told me this story. He was like, you remind me of my ex-wife. And I was like, oh no, is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> um, and, you know, I just didn't know at that time in my career, like, uh, how to take that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but working with him, working with him again, um, it was it was totally fine. And just knowing that everyone is feeling what you're feeling too. Like if I'm feeling scared, nervous, everyone else is kind of feeling that way too. So just settle in and and have comfort that we're all in it together. Yeah. It gets easier, yeah. of course. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure. With more practice, the easier it gets. I have no doubt that. Totally. That's really interesting. Uh, so, yeah, you uh, were in, you had a show in 2000, I guess it started in 2011, that, called The True Heroines, that it says on IMDb that you helped, cre- it says creator. Uh, so, I did create that show, yeah. yeah. So what's all, tell us all about, about that. Well, that so this show the true heroines came out of a cabaret that i used to dance in so cabaret is like to me it's like it was a musical theater for adults you know like it was a little bit racier than a, a typical musical theater show and we used to perform together the true heroines so me and paula and my friend Giovanna, we used to perform together in in clubs all around Vancouver and it was kind of like a drop-in show and we did this for five years we oh. ran this cabaret for five years and it just became this big anomaly in Vancouver um, we sold out every show there was lineups around the corner to come and see the true heroines and um, the, the characters we created were inspired by our grandparents and um, the show is actually about 1950s housewives with superhero powers. Huh. And yeah, it was um, kind of a dream role. Uh, I always thought women, well, I still think women are extremely talented and uh, brave in the roles that they play as mothers and raising families. And um, they have to be extremely strong. And so we wanted to showcase just that. We wanted to showcase how strong women are. And in the 50s, um, you know, the juxtaposition of having it being a man's world was a really fun way to portray that. And then so having these women be, have superpowers also was like, um, even even added more excitement to that element of being in the 50s and being, um, you know, not having all the rights that we do nowadays, of course. Mm-hmm. So from the cabaret, we created a web series and it was a little six part web series that actually ended up doing really well. It, it went to the Canadian Screen Awards and was nominated. It won a Leo Award for Best Series and it, it presented itself in festivals all over the world. So I'm really proud of that show. Yeah. That's totally proud great. Of that. So what superpower did you have? <laughs> um, my character's name was Pearl Andrews, and uh, she was very shy. And um, so her, her power was invisibility, oh. which allowed her to hide when she got nervous or when she got scared, but also to get herself out of some very sticky situations. <laughs> which, which one would you would you pick if you personally, if you had, if you wanted, it got a superpower, which one would you want? Oh my God. That question is so funny because it's so hard to narrow it down. Right. Like, yeah, I, I think it would be super awesome to be able to do things really fast. So our, our true heroines in the show, we had super speed, super strength and mine was invisibility. And I, and they're all so crucial. Like I think they're all so important, but I think it would be like, <laughs> Imagine in the morning if, if you could just get out of bed and like snap your fingers and you're already ready and your breakfast is already <laughs> ready, you know? Yeah, <laughs> like, wouldn't yeah, that yeah. be amazing? A so superpower would breakfast. Do with, like saving time. Really would be pretty, pretty good. Just boom, breakfast is there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who wouldn't want that? Who couldn't need that? I mean, come on. That's yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think it would be amazing to be able to fly. Uh, I, that's got yeah. that would be a really cool feeling. Uh, I mean, 
invisibility. I mean, it's interesting because you got like, you know, I mean, it sounds like you, they were sort of like the housewife version of the Fantastic Four, practically. You just need one more. <laughs> you can have, because uh, totally, yeah. I, I don't know if I really have anything that I'm a pretty open book person, but yeah, if you were really shy like that, then I could see the invisibility uh, power coming into handy. But, uh, or I guess if you, if you were, maybe you would probably be handy in like high school, you know, you could get all the dish. All the things. You could start totally, up like a, yeah. a, a like, gossip girl kind of website with all the <laughs> secrets of the clips. With all the gossip. Yeah. It would be, yeah. That'd be good. That'd be, that'd be fun. Well, you can watch true heroines on YouTube. <laughs> it's, it's up on the internet. If you guys want to ever check it out, um, cool. the true heroines. Yeah. It's on YouTube. You can watch it. Good. That's great. Well, so your first role for Hallmark was a small role in Lucky in Love in 2014, I believe. Yeah. So had you ever heard of Hallmark? Yep. Did you know kind of what they did? I know they don't have the channel in Canada. Yeah, we know. don't have a channel in Canada, but we they, they, stream, they stream the shows on the Women's Network that we have up here. So I have seen a lot of the Hallmark movies before. And um, they shoot up here in Canada a lot of the time. So we, yeah. um, so I had been auditioning for the network, you know, probably for a couple of years before I ended up booking with them. Uh -huh. um, yeah. So we're lucky that we get all the, a lot of the Hallmark productions up here. It uh, gives us a lot of work. We're really yeah. grateful for that. You have been in a lot of fan favorites. I mean, Autumn Dreams, Once Upon a Holiday, Appetite for Love, Moonlight in Vermont, Miss Christmas, Flip That Romance, Sailing into Love. That's quite a, a resume to have, and, among others. And uh, so, and I also, I mean, you, we, we've long joked that we want to have a, a, the first ever pageant of the Queens of Hallmark. And you really can help <laughs> us with this because you've worked with Lacey Chabert, Candace Cameron Bure, Brooke Dorsey, Taylor Cole, Jill Wagner. <laughs> I mean, that's got to be. I've worked um, with the best. I've yeah. worked with all the Hallmark queens. Yeah, everyone has been a, a really awesome um, co-star. Like, I had such a great time working with Lacey. Uh, she works extremely hard. And she was, she had just had her baby when we shot Moonlight in Vermont. Her little one was only four months old and she was, you know, breastfeeding in between takes and, and, and working 12 hour days. Like it was such an inspiration to see a new mom work as hard as she did. And she yeah. didn't skip a beat. And she was ne always, always so nice. You know, like she's just a, a wonderful person to work with. Yeah. Um, Sailing into Love, the one that we just shot uh -huh. um, with uh, Leah Ren Renee. She, uh -huh. She's also a dream, and she had two kids on set with her. So uh, these women, you know, they're such powerhouses, really. And, and yeah. we're shooting, like, we shoot about 20 pages a day, I'm, like, on average. Sometimes we're doing six or seven scenes, um, big scenes. Like, each scene could have five pages of dialogue. Uh, so it's like it moves fast and your brain has to be really sharp and you have to be like on it all the time. So these women, I applaud them. That's and I'm awesome. just there to support them. You know, yeah. I'm just totally like, I'm always there to support whatever they need. I'm like, what do you need? Do you want to run lines? You need, you need a break. What, what do you need? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I love how hearing that about how supportive Hallmark is uh, for women, uh, you know, with their children, with their other things. Uh, I think that's really great. To, to it is. Yeah. We're very lucky. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it, I know that the shooting of these films is very intense, uh, but, uh, it sounds like, uh, it's usually, even though it's stressful, it's usually a pretty positive experience on set and, and such. Well, my, my favorite place is being on set. It's my happy place. Like uh -huh. when I'm, surrounded with people who are collaborating to make and tell these stories. It's, um, I'm happy. Even when the conditions are bad and, you know, you're, you're freezing. Like we often shoot summertime movies in the winter yeah. and, and vice versa. We shoot winter movies in the summer just because of the turnaround time. Uh huh. So, you know, it can, we can be outside 
in February in Canada and it's cold. It's right. like pretty cold awesome. out here yeah. and we'll be in our summer dresses, you know, and we have to act happy and warm and like it's summertime. So even when the conditions are, are not ideal, um, <laughs> I, it's being on set for me is, is still being in my happy place. Yeah. Well, it must've been fun in this last one, Sailing Into Love, working with Lee Friedlander, a female director, because she's, she's the best. We love her. We interviewed her. I uh, love Lee. Yeah. yeah. She is a rock star. She's actually one of my top directors I've ever worked with. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's so much fun. And uh, so that's cool. And uh, I, yeah, I've always, wondered do you feel after making all of these christmas movies all summer do you ever do you feel at all like christmas out like when you get to the holidays <laughs> itself you're like eh, i've already done that this year i'm done <laughs> yeah it's like christmas never ends in, in my world um yeah. i i love christmas like cr- getting ready for christmas you know it's, it's it's very nostalgic and all the all the smells of you know the shortbread cookies in the oven and the the pine and of the Christmas trees. Like it, if anything, it's, it's more of like a nostalgia. Uh-huh, so shooting yeah. in the summertime, it can bring some good memories. Uh-huh. Um, I would, I would say, I don't say I get sick of it. I think it's just all fun. You know, yeah. it's like oh, playtime. Cool. You're not like, if I see another thing of hot cocoa, I'm going to. <laughs> If I see one more <laughs> Christmas sweater, I'm going to lose yeah. it. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, do you get, do you have to worry about like having enough liquids and stuff? You get overheated wearing these big jackets and stuff in the middle of the summer. Yeah. It, it can be challenging. It's, um, the, the wardrobe people and hair and makeup people, they'll come over with fans and they'll be like holding umbrellas over your head to try to give you some shade. Uh-huh. Uh, so yeah, definitely the elements can be challenging for sure. Yeah, yeah. So Moonlight in Vermont is an interesting one because you kind of uh, had a little romance, which was fun, with Jason Saramek's character. With my friend Jason, yeah. With, yeah. He's great, and uh, so that must be kind of fun. Even though it wasn't the lead romance, it was still pretty, pretty well done, pretty well developed. And uh, was that fun to do? Oh yeah, uh, Jason and I have known each other for years, <laughs> and we've played. I think we played romantic love interest two or three times. Oh. We, yeah, we played like hu- husband and wife in a Lifetime movie together. Oh, and so I call. He is my TV husband. He's like my TV hubby and and he's so wonderful to work with i just was in la uh last weekend at a film festival and i had to tape an audition so i called up jason i was like what are you doing can you help me with an audition and and like in a in a moment's notice he was like sure no problem so he's just a really lovely guy he's he's an alberta boy so he's like small town um you know good-hearted guy and and I'm just, I'm lucky to, to work with him. He, he makes it easy for sure. In the Lifetime movie, was he like a killer or something or was it bad? Oh, it, it was so funny. It was called um, Psycho Wedding Crasher. Uh, oh. So it was, nice. <laughs> Heather Morris was the, the lead and she was, um, she was the, the psycho. So she actually oh, okay. kidnapped Jason because she wants to marry him. And oh. I end up saving him. Uh, oh, good. So I become the hero in the movie, and that was super fun. That's yeah, I think hilarious. I saved him from the trunk of a car or something. He had been like kidnapped, and it was, yeah, it was funny. <laughs> Psycho wedding crasher. They just had one this year called Psycho Granny. <laughs> Just, oh my god yeah. so good yeah <laughs> actually i haven't seen it but i just saw the images and i was dying laughing <laughs> it was a pretty grim thanksgiving dinner it looked like from what i could see in the publicity go granny <laughs> yeah, we've true. all been there yeah. we've all the, we all have experienced that yeah. thanksgiving yeah. dinner yeah. grandma yeah. has too much sherry <laughs> well, look out yeah, yeah that's right <laughs> So, but the other other favorite of mine that you've been in was Miss Christmas. I I really I loved the writing in that movie. Joa Bokin, her writing was so good. I think in it, and Brooke was so lovely, and Mark was so lovely. And one thing I really liked is I I hate the the usually the portrayal of like 
women as the ice queen of business kind of thing like oh she has a job so she's like a horrible person and i i right. hate that cliche that trope and i what i liked in miss christmas is i i just felt like oh my gosh her everybody in her office and everything like that i was expecting them to be all awful and like unreasonably mean <laughs> Because that's what happens a lot in these kind of things. But everybody was so nice and so supportive. And I thought that you and Brooke had a real nice chemistry and dynamic. And I, I know I just really enjoyed the writing in that. And I liked, you know, when you come and visit her and, and are helping her at the end, like putting in the tree together. And you're like, <laughs> you're like, what are you doing? I love, I love working with Brooke. Yeah. Brooke is awesome, and she's a she's a born Canadian as well, like myself. So we kind of bonded over that. Uh -huh. um, but she she is a total sweetheart. That movie was really fun to work on, and I feel the same way about the way women are portrayed with their careers all the time, like having to choose between career or having to choose between a man. And I think I think Hallmark is is doing the right thing these days, portraying yeah. women you know, as being stronger and as being able to have their careers. And of course, we have to show that we support each other. I mean, I'm a huge fan of women. And like, like my show True Heroines that I created is all about like girl power and girls yeah. coming together and like women being strong and women being independent. So I think that the more we do that through the Hallmark Network, I think just I think the, the more the viewers will respond to it, because that is what today is all about you know we have so much choice today in the world as women um, so it's the way we choose to present ourselves how we want to be seen and how we want the next generation to see us too yeah. right we want we want the next generation to see us being strong women who support and lift each other up so I love Hallmark stories for that reason like I'm I often play the best friend and I get to be the supporter I get to be the cheerleader for these women and I, I get to help them through these tough decisions that we in our own life often go through as well yeah because it's not that you don't have to make sacrifices for your career you absolutely do and there's tough decisions that have to be made but the I don't know just the whole idea that you know the that there's almost something unnatural about the working women that was i think portrayed for a long time uh that uh you know as opposed to the more maternal type woman i would would really you know irritate me and, uh, and so i do appreciate that we've seen more of that that balance is at least possible and some more positive portrayals like i really liked uh love to the rescue this year i think that was a really good example of of a portrayal in a Hallmark movie of a mother, Nikki Deloach was so good in it, of her, you know, still fulfilling her goals in her career, but also finding romance. And I, I thought they did a really good job in that one. And so I'm glad to see that happening as well. So it's good. And I noticed, so do you like kind of mixing up sort of more edgy, edgy material like Altered Carbon and, and, you know, with this sort of lighter Hallmark stuff? Is that kind of it, that kind of make uh, a more sort of satisfying, uh, you know, career experience for you? Yeah, definitely. Uh, we're, we're fortunate here in Vancouver where, where I do most of my work that we have these um, amazing American productions that come here and shoot. So the opportunities are there for me to, to play these parts. And uh -huh. um, I've been really lucky with the parts that have come my way. Uh, I, I, I guess, I don't know, maybe it's my red hair, but I, I've been pigeonholed to play these, these really strong women, these uh -huh. really like powerhouse women, like in Dirk Gently, I, I'm, I'm a CIA, I'm like head of the CIA. So, uh -huh. um, it's, it's really cool for me to step into those positions and, and play these powerhouse women. I love it. I have, love having that, that um, shift. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, that's that's really cool. And you know, and then in the Hallmark stuff, we can we can be a little softer, and uh, a, yeah, a little bit more fun. That I've got fun. um I've got two parts coming up. I've got two parts coming out this next coming year. Uh -huh. um, part of a show called Snowpiercer. It's going to be oh. um, on TBS, and I play the teacher. And so um, it was awesome. I got to work with kids throughout the season, which is a uh, 
absolute dream come true. And I've got another show coming out where I've, I've been working with kids. Um, you might have heard of it. It was a series in the 90s called Are You Afraid of the Dark? Uh-huh. And so they're remaking it. Uh-huh. Um, it's going to be all brand new. And I, I play the mom. So, again, oh. I, I've, I've fallen into this, this really nice um, role of, of playing these nourishing but strong women. That's really cool. So Snowpiercer, is that uh, based on the movie? Yeah, it's a huh. series starring Jennifer Connelly and huh. David Diggs. And it's going to air, um, it comes out in April 2020. And um, Are You Afraid of the Dark is going to be coming out in October of huh. 2020, just in time for Halloween. Yeah. Sorry, uh, 2019. 2019, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so is it like a school class that's on the train? or something or yeah so basically snowpiercer what happens is uh the world has you know frozen over and we've been living on this train for seven years and um so it just shows every aspect of life on the train from first class to third class to the tail end and um there's kids on the train and so they're obviously they need to be taught and uh, that's where i come in so there's a classroom and everything on the train and it shows the, the child's life and what we go through and how we live and stuff. It's pretty cool. That is cool. I, li- I really like the film. So that, that's really Yeah, it's, it's based on the film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. That's very good. Uh, all right. Uh, my last question is just uh, when you've been on f- like feature films, like Star Trek Beyond and, thing- and Big Eyes and things like that, how is that a different experience than doing these smaller, you know, uh, television films? Is, is it just a lot, just a lot yeah. bigger or, and what's the kind of the difference in, for you? Well, um, I would say the, the biggest difference is probably in budget and what, what sure. more money does is it buys you more time. Okay. So even if the movie is a hundred pages, like cause, cause these Hallmark movies that we do for TV are hundred pages and mm-hmm. uh, you know, a feature film can be a hundred pages to 200 pages. So in a, in a feature like Big Eyes, um, where I worked with Tim Burton and Christoph Waltz, uh-huh. we had, you know, on the call sheet, on the schedule that you get on the day, you have, you know, maybe one scene that you're shooting that day, and we'll spend all day shooting that one scene. And that scene could be two pages, or it could be three. So in the TV land, you have seven to ten scenes to shoot in a day wow. just because we don't have enough time there's there's not enough time so the quicker so the pace is the, the most different yeah. in in the tv land compared to feature film land and yeah. and that's just has to do with money the more money you have the more time you have that's interesting yeah so it's it's uh is it sort of more pressure in a way or less uh, both of them are there, or are they just different? They're just different. It's just different. Like I, I've talked to actors about this, and um, some people like the TV world better than they like the feature film world. Because feature film, if you think about it, you're shooting two pages a day. Uh-huh. That can get kind of boring. Right. You know? it, there's yeah. a lot of waiting around. There's a lot of setting up, right? So, you know, I, I read a lot of books. You get a lot of knitting done or whatever. <laughs> Whereas in TV it goes by fast. So you're, you're on your toes, you're moving constantly. Um, there's a sense of urgency that is not boring, right? Because uh-huh. you've got to get it done. You got to get it done fast. So it goes by faster. Yeah. They're just different. Yeah. That's, that's interesting for sure. All right. Well, we like to end our interviews with what we call the team beat questions. And these are a bunch of silly questions that Amber found in an old F- issue of team beat plus a few of our own. So nice. Here we go. What is the best ice cream flavor? Uh, chocolate chip cookie dough. All right. Very good. Uh, what is your favorite color? Yellow. Oh, good. Okay. What music are you into right now? Ooh, folk. Oh, cool. Do you have any favorite uh, singers, folk singers? Ooh, who am I listening to right now? Oh, I can't remember their name, but I found this wonderful artist. Um, uh, you know what I've been listening to? Like, what is on my 
playlist right now. 90s mix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Spotify. Nice. Very like good. old PLC. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right. Uh, what is your go-to date night food? Ooh, probably Italian, like mm. a good popper deli pasta. Oh, that's too, that's smart too, because you don't want to get spaghetti because then you'll spill on it. It's <laughs> too tricky. It's too hard to eat. <laughs> So that's a good good pasta choice. <laughs> uh, okay, what is your go to date night activity? Um, a hike, like a nice walk, uh-huh. and some some music. Some somehow I'm going to see some music, maybe outdoors or something. That would be ideal. Okay, great. All right, uh, dogs or cats? Dogs. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, beaches or mountains? Ooh, I live in Vancouver. I have beaches and mountains. I'm so spoiled. Rub it in. I would say beach. (laughs) Me too. too. I'm the same. Uh, Okay. Would you rather be in a fancy dress or in sweats? Oh, who doesn't want to be in sweats? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. What is your favorite holiday to celebrate? Ooh, I think um, I'm a fan of Halloween. I got to say, I love dressing up. I love playing characters and and pumpkin seeds and jack-o'-lanterns. I love all that. Yeah. What what was your last uh, costume that you did? What was I last year? Oh, I was a mad scientist. Oh, that's I was like an Einstein, crazy mad scientist. (laughs) Yeah. That's cool. I was an angel last year. And so that was fun. Oh. <laughs> I tried to get Amber to be the devil, but she refused. <laughs> oh, I no know. fun. I know. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I actually think I enjoyed the prep work of Halloween even more than the actual day. I, I really like like thinking about my costume and, and uh, putting it all yeah. together. And it's really fun to do so i it's definitely up there for me plus it's you know obviously the candy you gotta like the Halloween candy <laughs> of, the course, best. of course <laughs> uh all right last question and this is hard for people in canada so you can pick one of your own but what is your favorite hallmark movie oh. um i'm gonna say oh well, I'm going to say any of the Christmas ones because okay. I watch those during Christmas and it just always makes me feel good. So the Christmas yeah. movies are my, my, my jam. Yeah, they're my, my favorite. favorite. They're kind of my gateway drug to Hallmark. <laughs> to the, to the, totally. Yeah, to the Christmas movies. Yeah. So, well, hopefully we'll get to see you in some Christmas movies this uh, this year. And that will be really fun. Yeah. And, yeah. So thanks so much for coming and talking with us. This was a lot of fun. Thank you for having me. This was a super duper treat. <laughs> well, do you have social media that you'd like to share for our listeners? I do. Yeah. You can follow me. My uh, Twitter is Fiona Vroom and so is my Instagram, just uh, Fiona Vroom. And um, yeah, that's all. Great. See you guys well, soon. Yeah. We'll have that all in the description section. So definitely follow Fiona and thanks again for coming on the podcast. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Have a good day. Okay. Bye. Bye guys. Thanks so much to Fiona for coming on the podcast. Really enjoyed talking with her. Let us know if you have any comments or questions or anything in the comment section or on Twitter. We'd love to hear your thoughts. And uh, please consider becoming a patron of the podcast. Uh, It's so much fun. We do a live movie watch uh, once a month where we give our commentary. We have our Facebook group. It's so much fun. We try to give you extras, which try to make it definitely worth your while. So check out the Patreon group. We also have our feedback show that we would love to hear your thoughts on. If you send us email, feedback at hallmarkiespodcast.com, or you can call and leave a feedback at 801-855-6407. We also have our merch store, which has tons of fun stuff. So check that out. Make sure you're following us on social media. We try to post every single day. If you're listening on iTunes, if you can give us your ratings and reviews, if you're listening on YouTube, if you can give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Sure appreciate it. And you can follow me at Rachel's Reviews all over social media and on iTunes and YouTube. And so please do that. 
And thanks again. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye.